he came across very diplomatically. I think he spoke really passionately. He spoke, I mean, I connected with what he was saying and I thought that he did a good job kind of explaining that, that, uh, to the audience. He came over at his, at his, uh, press conference earlier today with, with secretary of state Blinken and he's, kind of iterated several times. I'm not here to lecture you. I'm not here to influence your politics, but I'm here to give you my opinion. And I think that that played well with um, countering some of the narratives because it's not popular, right, to hear, oh, you know, Lord Cameron's just going to come over here and tell us what to do. And joining me now following Lord Cameron's uh, visit to the United States is uh, Caitlin uh, Dornbos, who is the Washington reporter for the New York Post. And thank you for joining us. Yes, of course. What sort of impact, if any, uh, on uh, America has this visit by Lord Cameron had? I think that it has had its intended purposes. It's it's brought in more um, attention to the issue. I'm not sure if he could have ever really affected that much change within the Republican Party to get this swift movement of aid through that I'm sure that he, he so wanted. But, I mean, I think that he coming here, meeting with Trump last night, uh, that was certainly buying favor with Republicans. Um, and then following that up with kind of speaking with the officials who are in Washington and um, trying to get in to Cong Congress. Of course, our House Speaker, Mike Johnson, declined to um, accept his invitation to meet. But um, I understand that he's actually met with some other uh, lawmakers, just ones that aren't as crucial to this fight. I mean, it's being interpreted here in the newspaper, the word snub by Mike Johnson is being used. Yeah, I think snub is a, is a, a perfectly appropriate way to, um, you know, col color that. He met with um, Lord Cameron in December. And so this was kind of like a bit of an about face um, all these months later. Granted, he is facing a really hard um, time ahead. We have it in our uh, Congress right now in the House where it only takes one person to stand up and, and, and kick the House Speaker out. That's why we had that chaos last year when um, we saw our former House Speaker ousted. Um, and I think Mike Johnson is afraid of that and, and siding with, um, well, siding with anything that Donald Trump says, uh, siding against that. He's just not going to touch that. I mean, it's a bit of a contradiction, really, that Trump did uh, meet with Cameron, whereas uh, his sidekick, if I could put it that way, didn't. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and you know what? I've seen that in some other British media, kind of colored as, as oh, it's a big failure. You know, it was embarrassing that he went to speak with Trump and then got snubbed by Mike Johnson. And I think that that is a little bit unfair because he went to speak with Donald Trump, I think, even having the diplomatic engagement at all is still going to curry some favor with Republicans here. And um, I, I think it was a bit, if he did think that meeting with Donald Trump was going to guarantee him a meeting with Mike Johnson today, that may have been a little bit naive. Okay. Now, you said he saw other lawmakers. Were some of those Republicans who have been um, uh, holding up the aid to Ukraine? Um, yeah. There, it's a complicated situation. There are the hard hardliners who say absolutely not. They would not meet with him. Um, Marjorie Taylor Greene is, is one of them that kind of has had a tumultuous relationship with Lord Cameron from afar. Um, obviously would not meet with him. But he was able to meet with people who were willing to talk to him, who were actually interested in having that conversation. Those people... Those ones on the fence, um, those are the ones that are probably the uh, most likely to flip. And he got to he got to um, meet with them, at, at least. What about his uh, key meetings with the administration, with the Secretary of State mm -hmm. uh, and his news conference, of course? One of the things that Lord Cameron did say was that Britain would not uh, be cutting off arms sales to Israel. Uh, was that welcome? Uh, yes. I mean, certainly I think that is welcome among kind of the conservative audiences, not cutting off those weapons to Israel. However, 
there is. I still- think it was a welcome to the White House. Right. I know it's it's uh, it's it's something else. It wasn't welcome to the White House, though. I mean, um, well, I guess that's unfair to say. I don't know for for certain on that, but uh, I think there's a growing apprehension to continuing this um, effort here in the White House, giving all of that support to Israel. But still, the U.S. is not going to back down. And there's we're still giving um, weapons and aid to Israel and certainly would with this package that would also provide funding for Ukraine. There's still some funding in that bill that would provide some weapons for Israel as well. So, So the U.K. is not alone in that. And the central focus for Lord Cameron was aid to Ukraine. Um, what did we learn about that? Um, we're largely in the same place that um, we were uh, before his visit. I mean, I think having international officials come to D.C. and speak with our leaders, that at least shows some of that importance. Uh, and and the U.K. is a valued partner. I mean, the U.S. looks to the U.K. for a lot of um, when it develops its foreign policy plans. And I think that it was, I don't know if it was as in, instrumental as, uh, as you know, I think he had some really high goals with this meeting. But um, uh, I think that uh, hopefully it made somewhat of a difference. Um, In the White House, of course, everyone is delighted to hear from him and and was, I think, grateful that he made the trip because they're fighting the same battle. Is um, there any more on his agenda now in the United States? Not that I'm aware of. He's kind of wrapping up his trip. He met with um, Secretary Blinken and our national security advisor today, um, Jake Sullivan, and then, again, those lawmakers. And, um, you know, he's got to get back to his job there in London. Now, just finally, there's been some comment here that he went to see Donald Trump and that, that maybe that was a breach of protocol, which might upset uh, the Biden White House. Um, on the other hand, as Lord Cameron said at his press conferences, happened many times before meetings between uh, people in government in the UK and people in the opposition, as we would say, in the United States. So has that ruffled any feathers? You know, I um, would be shocked if he didn't run it by the White House before he went. You know, Apparently he didn't. We're told he didn't. <laughs> that, see that? Then I'll take that at face, face value. <laughs> but, um, you know, it is. It is. He did, he did the same thing in 2012 with Mitt Romney when Mitt Romney was the opposition candidate running against Barack Obama. I, it has precedent. Um, I think... I think that uh, the White House will take any help it can get in trying to get through to Donald Trump on the sidelines, though, of course, they like to stay far away from that that uh, fire pole. And uh, Washington, the New York Times today describes uh, David Cameron as almost a British leader abroad. Is that how you'd see it? Almost a British leader. I don't know. I think he came across very diplomatically. I think he spoke really passionately. He spoke, I mean, I connected with what he was saying and I thought that he did a good job kind of explaining that, that uh, to the audience. He came over at his, at his uh, press conference earlier today with, with secretary of state Blinken and he's, kind of iterated several times. I'm not here to lecture you. I'm not here to influence your politics, but I'm here to give you my opinion. And I think that that played well with um, countering some of the narratives because it's not popular, right, to hear, oh, you know, Lord Cameron's just going to come over here and tell us what to do. No, we wanted to have conversations. How effective they actually were, uh, we'll let you decide. Kendin Dunbos, thank you very much indeed. Always a pleasure.